In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Maximilian Kolbe, who was killed in Auschwitz in Germany in 1941 when he was 47 years old. He was a conventional Franciscan who did many things before he was killed. He traveled to Europe and, I mean, through Europe, he traveled to Asia. He worked uh, tirelessly for the faith. He was killed, as you probably know, having allowed himself to be substituted or volunteering himself to be substituted for a man who was going to die, a man who had wife and, and family. And so uh, he was starved to death but did not die. So finally they gave him a lethal injection with others who had also survived. Um, Pope John Paul II named him a martyr for charity. There was some consideration that maybe he shouldn't be a martyr because it wasn't because of the faith, but because of uh, the godlessness of Nazism, it was decided in the end that he would be a martyr, so therefore we were read today. Coming together then at his feast, mindful of God's great love, God's mercy, God's call to each of us, we consider our own lives and for our sins and failings. We ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to new life. Lord, have mercy. You are pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. You are light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, you filled the priest and martyr St. Maximilian Kolbe with a burning love for the Immaculate Virgin Mary and with zeal for souls and love of neighbor. Graciously grant through his intercession that striving for your glory by eagerly serving others, we may be conformed even until death to your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God and follow his ways exactly, to love and serve the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul, to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I enjoin on you today, for your own good? Think, the heavens, even the highest heavens, belong to the Lord your God, as well as the earth and everything on it. Yet in his love for your fathers, the Lord was so attached to them as to choose you, their descendants, in preference to all other peoples, as indeed he has now done. Circumcise your hearts, therefore, and be no longer stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is a God of gods, the Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who now who has no favorites, accepts no bribes, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and befriends the alien, feeding and clothing them. So you too must defend the alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. The Lord your God shall you fear, and him shall you serve. Hold fast to him and swear by his name. He is your glory, he your God, who has done for you those great and terrible things which your eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt 70 strong. And now the Lord, your God, 
has made you as numerous as the stars of the sky. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Pray your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your, your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders, and the best of wheat he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statues and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what the master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the Gospel reading that the Church has chosen for the Feast of St. Maximilian, and so I thought it was worth switching to it from the Gospel of Matthew that's assigned to the the day in this week, laying down one's life for one's friends, laying down one's life for those that one does not even know, echoing the words of the first reading about caring for the stranger, reminding us that we were strangers, we were aliens once in a foreign land. We who are believers are still aliens in so many ways, even in this land. But the Lord calls us to be willing to lay down our lives, to be willing to give in love and service no matter what and for no matter whom it is for. In my homily yesterday that most of you did not hear because you were at the Portuguese Mass, in my homily I was talking about St. Clair as being Eucharistic even though she never spoke of the Eucharist, but Eucharist as a way of being, a way of pouring out one's life for others, even as the Lord did, is what we are called to do, who we are called to be. I mentioned at the later Mass, at the 1030 Mass, that the Eucharist and doing in memory of Jesus is not just taking the bread, taking the wine, standing around the altar doing what we do here. It's not just that. It's taking our own lives and be willing for them to be broken, to be poured out in love for others, as St. Maximilian did. Now, he died before I was born, but some of you were born before 1941, so some of you were alive when he was alive. And so there's a connection. He is a modern saint, a pope, I can't remember if it was Paul VI or John Paul II, said that he is the patron of the latter half of the 20th century because of his witness, his courage, his willingness to give up his life 
for another. And by the way, the man for whom he offered his life was present when he was beatified and when he was canonized. He was in Rome for both of those ceremonies. So the church calls us to be like Christ, as was St. Maximilian, and we try our best to do that. So we pray. We pray for the church throughout the world, that God's people everywhere, hearing the word of the Lord, may follow no matter the cost. We pray to the Lord. For our world, for peace, the people of Ukraine, Sudan, the people of Niger, we pray to the Lord. For the ill, the aged, the homeless, the homebound, the unemployed, for all who need our prayer and our service on their behalf, we pray to the Lord. That all who have died might sleep in Christ, we pray to the Lord. O God, hear these and all of our prayers, and in granting us your gifts, teach us through them to lay down our lives in love and service for one another, following the example of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord now and forever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, which is mine and yours, may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We present our offerings to you, O Lord, humbly praying that we may learn from the example of St. Maximilian to offer our very lives to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Jesus Christ. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels, cry out. And without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Oscar our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by his teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that renewed by the body and blood of your Son, we may be inflamed with the same fire of charity that St. Maximilian received from this holy banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Just a reminder of the holy day. Um, there will be Mass tonight, but also this Mass tomorrow in English, and then uh, a bilingual Mass, English and Spanish, at 6 o'clock. We did that because the Chinese had scheduled a Mass at 7.30 and then changed their mind, and they're having it at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, but by then, so. That's why we have a bilingual Mass instead of English and Spanish tomorrow night. But most of you will just come tomorrow morning, and it'll be just the same. And if we're lucky, there might be five more people, <laughs> if we're lucky. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.